Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to find the general solution of the given differential equation, and we will also need to state an interval in which that general solution is defined. So let's start by observing that we're looking at the linear differential equation. So we can see how y and its derivative are raised to the first power, and coefficients, well, in front of the first derivative, there is nothing, right? Well, it's 1. And in front of y, we have negative 2x, so the coefficients are functions of x. Um, in this case, it's just constant, right? 1. Now, so this is a linear differential equation, first order differential equation, and let's refresh the steps we have to take for solving. So step 1. We need to put equation in standard form that looks like this, so let's uh, look at it and try to match it with what we have. So it has the first derivative with no coefficient in front, in the front, and that's exactly what we have, y prime with no coefficient, okay? Then we should have y with its coefficient right next to it. So here's our y with its coefficient, so we'll have to move it to the other side, to the left side, by adding 2xy, so plus 2xy plus 2xy. Okay, I'm going to start writing y prime plus 2xy, and then function of x, just the standalone function of x, should stay on the right-hand side, x cubed. This is f of x in our equation. Okay, so step one is done. We put equation in standard form. Step two. In step two, we need to identify p of x. Well, p of x is the coefficient of y when equation is in standard form. So in this case, p of x is here. That is p of x. And then we need to find the integrating factor. Well, here's the integrating factor. It's e raised to the power that is integral of p of x. Well, that's why we need to identify it first. Well, let's set it up for our equation. So integrating factor. It's e to the power integral of p of x is 2x for us, dx. Looks like the integration will be easy here. Well, because I should say that now we have to simplify all that. Yes, integration is easy, so I'll just go ahead and do it right away. If it's a little bit more complicated, just do it on the side. So that's going to be 2x squared over 2. Right? That's the antiderivative of x. We're not going to write plus c, so we'll just leave it like that. Two cancels, and we end up with e to the power x squared. Well, that's, that's it. We won't be able to simplify it any further. e to the power x squared. So that is our integrating factor. Next, step three. We need to multiply each term of the equation by the integrating factor. So let's do that. So the integrating factor is e to the power x squared. I'm multiplying it by the first term, which is y prime, plus e to the power x squared. I'm multiplying by the second term, 2xy. And the right-hand side is being multiplied by the integrating factor as well, x squared times x cubed. Um, there's nothing to simplify here, right? So that means that we're done with step three. That was easy. Let's do step four. In step four, we need to rewrite the left side of the equation like this. So it's going to be derivative, d, dx, of the product of the integrating factor times y. Let's try it. So d, dx, of the product of the integrating factor, so e to the power x squared, that's the integrating factor, times y. And now at this point, I always stop and double check if everything looks right. So when I apply the derivative to this product, will I get um, indeed the left-hand side? Let's try. So here we have to apply the product rule, right? Now according to the product rule, I have to take uh, the first factor and multiply it by the derivative of the second factor. Well, this is it first factor times derivative of the second factor, y prime. And then I have to add, it's plus, the derivative of the first factor times
times the second factor. So what is the derivative of the first factor? Remember, derivative of e to the power is just itself, right? So, well, here it is. But then in this case, we also have to follow the chain rule because the power of e is the function on its own. So we we'll take derivative of the outer function, which is, again, e to that same power times the derivative of the inner function. Derivative of x squared is 2x. To x. So all that together is the derivative of this first factor times the second factor times y. So yes, indeed, uh, I just double checked that I can totally write the left-hand side in this form. That's exactly what I had if I expanded. And um, the right-hand side, I'll just rewrite e to the power x squared times x cubed. And now step five. We need to integrate both sides of the equation. So we're going to apply integral on the left and on the right. And the beauty of getting or doing the previous step is that now the left hand side is super easy. Antiderivative and derivative cancel each other out. So we're just left with e to the power x squared y e to the power x squared y on the left. And the right hand side, well, the right hand side is this integral which we need to work on on the side, right? This time I can't just do it in one step, I have to think about it. Okay, so I made some space for my scratch work. So the integral um, of e to the power x squared times x cubed dx. Now, as I look at this integral, um, I can see that we can try the substitution method for approaching it, but looks like that will not completely solve the problem. So we'll need to apply another method. So there will be several um, techniques that we have to apply to this integral. Uh, the second one that we'll apply will be integration by parts. And since integration by parts involve, remember, u, v, du, dv, like those letters that are common to use for integration by, by parts, I'm not going to use variable u for the substitution method. Uh, it's the most common variable to use, but I don't want to get confused later on. So I'm going to use variable, let's say, t. So um, I'm going to apply the substitution method. And let's think. So uh, let's uh, call this t. So t is x squared. Then dt is 2x dx, right? Now, um, I need to be able to replace everything, all the remaining x's, including the x, with t. So, uh, first, um, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 here so that I can isolate x dx. So, dt over 2 is x dx. Now, how do I perform the substitution here? I have x cubed dx, but I know what x dx is. Well, I think I can split up x cubed, right? So this is what I'm thinking to do. Um, I'll keep x squared for now. I can split up x cubed and I can create x dx for myself so that I can perform substitution because now, I, as I look at it, it will work out nicely since I already said that x squared is t. So that's going to be another t. And then x dx is, according to this step, is dt over 2, or 1 half dt, right? Okay, so that worked. Now I have, um, I'm going to put 1 half in the front. So 1 half integral e to the power t times t right here, and then dt. Okay, so that looks simpler than what we started with. But we're not done, right? So here we have a product of two different functions, e to the power t and um, just t. So that's the good candidate for integration by parts. Okay, so let's perform integration by parts. So for, um, remember, we have to find or assign u and dv. Um, we want our resulting integral after the steps to be simpler th than what we have now. So it makes sense to say that u is t because du 
is just one dt or dt. And now dv, um, so let me make some notes, that is u, uh, then dv will be e to the power t dt, okay? That means that v is, so antiderivative of e to the power t is itself, e to the power t, like that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use for integration by parts. Let's write it down. Now, integration by parts um, goes this way. First of all, I have one half here in front of this whole integral, so I'll put it outside of the uh, bracket. So now, integration by parts formula. Remember, it goes like this. u times v, okay, u times v, that's t e to the power t minus integral now here we had u dv in this integral we have it we have to have it the other way around v du v is e to the power t du is dt like that and definitely things got even easier right um, now what we have left to integrate is this part um, which is very easy right so that's one half t e to the power t minus antiderivative of e to the power t is itself so e to the power t like that okay so substitution method first and then integration by parts so two techniques that's you know some some something common when we're integrating uh, we're not done yet because we have to go back to the original variable, which is x. So now I have to recall that t is actually x squared. So I'm going to um, replace it. And I think I will distribute one half at this point. So it's one half. t is x squared. So one half x squared e to the power x squared minus one half e to the power t which is x squared and of course i need to write plus c that is totally fine to do it at the very end so plus c over here at the end um, if i decided to put it inside and then multiply it by one half well it's still a constant so i could just relabel it so here it is the final constant now we integrated let's recall what we why we did all that that was the right hand side of our equation right uh, we got the left hand side and now we obtained the right hand side i feel like i didn't leave enough space to put it all here so i'll i'll move it okay so now that is the general solution of the given differential equation left hand side and then result of the integration on the right hand side and um, as we already said before in the previous video that um, in this case, it's always easy to put this result or put this function in the explicit form. In other words, to get y by itself because of the nice structure of the left-hand side. So um, I'll do that. I'll divide by e to the power x squared every term and including that constant c, like every single term has to be divided. And quite a few things cancel here. Okay, so that's what I'll have. y equals 1 over 2x squared, right? Minus 1 half plus c over e to the power x squared. So that is the general solution to the given differential equation. It's general solution in the explicit form. And we also had to state an interval in which this general solution is defined. Well, notice that along the way, we didn't really talk about any restrictions, so everything went pretty smoothly. We didn't have to talk about any specific domains or functions. Yeah, we didn't come across any restrictions along the way, so that means that well, there are no restrictions. In other words, interval on which this general solution is defined is all real numbers. And um, there are a lot of different ways to say that. One of them is to say that x is between negative infinity and positive infinity, so all real numbers.